So while they are getting it ready for the second case, if you can get it quickly ready, uh, we go to the latest advances in left atrial appendage occlusion uh, by Dr. Gagan Singh. And next year, in our transcatheter, we'll do the case. Okay. We couldn't arrange it this time. Great, fantastic. Um, it's a great, great to be in, in New York. Uh, it was about 65 degrees when I left California, and so coming here at 30 degrees, uh, thank you for the invitation. Uh, and there were some flurries too, so uh, uh, I got to, got to get involved in that. So um, the discussion I had was, what are the latest advances in left atrial appendage occlusion, left atrial appendage closure, uh, whatever your terminology is du jour, but it's, it, the, the importance of left atrial appendage occlusion is, is something that um, I think it's important to highlight. The, if you look at the overall number of cases of LAO that are going to be performed um, as we approach the end of this decade and maybe even the subsequent decades, they're going to, there's going to be a logarithmic, exponentially increased scale of these procedures. There is some internal data that some of the larger manufacturers have that, that, that at, if we're not already there, we're pretty close to having more LAO cases done in this country than transcatheter aortic valve replacement uh, per year. So that's how much growth there is in this particular space. So, and especially once Champion AF, Catalyst, Option, these are other trials looking at all comers. Right now, we've always talked about left atrial appendage closure in patients that are ineligible for long-term systemic anticoagulation. But if you look at all comers, uh, that pie of patients who's potentially candidate for this therapy um, is going to go up. So based on the work that was done now several decades ago uh, by David Holmes and, and a lot of other folks uh, who have pioneered the concept of, you know, the vast, the, the biggest source of, of thrombi or thromboemboli in patients with atrial fibrillation that leads to stroke or systemic embolism really it originates within the left atrial appendage. The left atrial appendage is essentially the embryologic left atrium, so it's filled with pectinates. It's the, the surface is not smooth like it is in the left atrium, and it, is, and it has all these small little crevices where thrombi generate, they form, and if they kind of exit and go into the brain, that's where the stroke originates from. So the concept is, is that if you could occlude the ostium of the left atrial appendage, could there be a benefit? Could there be a reduction in stroke, stroke and systemic embolism? And then more importantly, is there a mortality benefit? And that's what the original pivotal trials did show is that there wasn't any sort of protection against stroke or systemic embolism relative to anticoagulation, but there was a reduction in mortality, and a lot of it was uh, driven by reduced bleeding events. So as, as, we get, as we received that data, there's been, an, again, an increase in the number of just operators, but also sites and cases that perform left atrial appendage closure. And so the future in the landscape of left atrial appendage closure, now that it is an established therapy, is can we do it safer? Can we do it with less number of exchanges? Can we do it with one transeptal? Can we do it with one device deployed? And I think as a group, as a community, we're getting there. Can we do it faster rather than using multiple devices? Can we know exactly what device we need every single time before we get in there? Can we use less resources? And I'll talk a little bit about that. And then can we do it better? We'll talk about this concept of, of peri-device leaks and DRTs, which is device-related thrombi. So these are all, all kind of anatomic or imaging findings that we see, but what do they mean clinically? And in five, 10 minutes, I won't be able to cover everything, but I'll, but I'll touch upon a few of these. So the concept is pretty simple. You have a round hole, and can you put a round peg in there? And that's the goal of left atrial appendage closure. Because this is not a procedure with symptomatic benefit, you want to be able to make sure that it's done safe, it's reproducible, and it should not increase harm as more and more operators and more and more centers begin to do the procedure. And it turns out that's, that's probably not the case. Here on the y-axis, uh, from zero all the way to 100, if you look at the rates of major adverse cardiac events based on your experience, and your experience could be less than 40, 40 to 80, uh, more than 80, overall, it's a, it's a procedure that, that you can complete with very low rates of major adverse cardiovascular events. <coughs> on the right side, if you look at technical success, which is implantation of device and having a leak around the device that's less than five millimeters, the rates good, certainly do go up as you get more experience. And some of that may be due to better understanding of the device, the size, trajectory, uh, transeptal puncture, and so forth. What has really helped with, with, I think, improving our overall rates of technical success is really innovation and imaging. Uh, as an interventional cardiologist, I'm talking to you about imaging, and that's a little bit of a disclosure. So, but even as an interventional cardiologist, you can begin to understand that uh, a, a CT ahead of time and CT after not just gives you dimensions, but you can get a lot more information such as morphology, trajectory, sheet sizes uh, that are needed and, and potential transeptal puncture locations. So it can really help guide and tailor uh, uh, your procedure far more precisely. 
We've, we've shifted towards doing CT scans for all of our TAVR patients that can be done with minimal sedation. The same can be possible with left atrial appendage closure as well. In fact, there's data now to suggest, this is a, a series looking at amulet cases predominantly out of Europe, uh, but if you looked at patients uh, who were treated either with or without pre-procedure CT, CT imaging, and if the operators got unblinded or if they knew what the, C, the CT showed, the risk of, or the success rates of both short and long-term um, uh, for the procedure went up quite dramatically. And again, you get a, a full 3D assessment. You can do left atrial appendage sizing. You can do look for additional lobes, and, and it can also help guide your transeptal sheaths as you go into the appendage and can tell you what trajectory you're looking for. If you're not savvy enough to do the CT analysis on your own, which I, I think that's one of the things that we teach our fellows to do, that's very important for them to be able to do that. Both the manufacturers of the US approved devices have planning software. This is the true plan system where you can see the SVC in this top ring, the IVC, this is the inner atrial septum, and this is this green segment here is a landing zone for the, uh, for the left atrial appendage closure device. So you can play around with the software and clock or counterclockwise rotate your catheters, advance it in, retract it, and as you deploy, it can give you some sort of uh, information as to what, what the landing zone is gonna look like or what the, the deployment's gonna look like. You can do multi-planar reconstruction as shown here. You can actually simulate device placement in there as well. And, and in this particular case, this is a Watchman device. You can simulate what depth you have, how is it gonna look in your imaging views as you deploy it. And then this comes in a nice little PDF that can be sent to your phone. And so right before you walk into the case, you can look at this and perform it. And then more importantly, at the, at the follow-up imaging, you can confirm that you actually do have complete seal of the left atrial appendage closure um, and the patient can discontinue their oral anticoagulation. This is an imaging system um, uh, by, it's an independent company, uh, uh, FIOPS. Um, they've certainly done a lot of work with amulet. And again, here amulet, you can see where the amulet is placed proximal or distal, different sizes. And you can look at the amount of compression or the forces that are being applied to the device as highlighted by these red uh, indicators. So, so really a lot of work being done in the form of, of CT imaging, but the CT imaging has also helped us understand how we can implement three-dimensional intracardiac echo into our LAO practices. We talked a little bit about 3D ice uh, um, earlier as when we talked about tricuspid, I think Becky mentioned it, um, and then we saw some fantastic uh, um, imaging from 3D intracardiac echo, but 3D ice for LAO has, has also really um, helped us get through our, our backlog of LAO patients, and I'll, and I'll show you how. The CT helps to tell us exactly where the intracardiac echo probe gets positioned, uh, and you can position in multiple different positions uh, to see the left atrial appendage, but now we've gravitated towards getting patients into our cath labs, not our rooms where we do other structural procedures, just a simple cath lab, no anesthesia, no endotracheal intubation, just fentanyl versed, nurse-led sedation. They get two punctures, one for intracardiac echo, one for the therapy, and they all go home on the same day now. And they're usually up and about walking around within four hours. So with intracardiac echo, I certainly think that is on the horizon for left atrial appendage closure. Today, LAO is resource intensive. You have an anesthesiologist, you have an imager, you have a proceduralist, you have multiple techs and nurses and, and some institutions fellows, obviously. But what we have gravitated towards, and now we have a series of over 100 patients, where we are now down in the cath lab with just a sonographer, no imager, no anesthesiologist, one circulating nurse, one tech, and then a, an attending and a fellow. And this has really increased our throughput for, for LAO patients. This is a series that our, our fellow looked at that has uh, put it together and published. Uh, uh, the, the numbers need to be updated, but what we find is that the correlation of the measurement, because when you deploy these devices, you have to confirm you meet certain criteria for deployment, and one of them is compression. So this actually shows you that the correlation between what we're getting with 3D ice and also with CT post-deployment, correlation is very, very high if you consider CT the gold standard, and this can be successfully used and safely used for, for LAO closure procedures, and the vast majority of patients do not have peri-device leaks as a result of this. So we're not causing harm uh, by doing this 3D ice. What's also on the, on the innovation landscape, obviously, is Watchman Flex Pro. This is the latest iteration of the device that's gonna be released soon. It has special hemocote technology, which is gonna allow for reduced uh, device-related thrombus. And, and many patients now, when we treat them with LAO, we have to put them on an oral anticoagulant afterwards. But remember, these are all patients that wanna come off of the oral anticoagulation to begin with. This device is gonna allow aspirin monotherapy only. Just aspirin, device goes in, just aspirin. Uh, and very low rates of, of device-related thrombus and very low rates of peri-device leak. So what does the overall landscape look like? They're all essentially plugs. 
So some conformalism is part of a pivotal trial here in the US. The uh, vast majority of these are, are OUS in Europe and there's some that were in China. But these are all essentially plugs. And so here in the closing kind of minute or so, I'll kind of show you kind of the latest iteration or latest innovation in the field of left atrial appendage occlusion and really is this left atrial appendage exclusion. So this is a laminar device where we've had some kind of um, uh, opportunity to work with this device where you direct the catheters into the appendage and then there's this, this ball that goes in there which adheres to the tissue and kind of uh, engages the tissues and as you rotate, um, what it does is basically starts closing the appendage on itself and almost if you take a, a piece of uh, um, um, a bread bag and then as you kind of rotate it, it closes the ostium and you place this very small low profile anchor which is about a third the size of a surface of a watchman device or an amulet device and over time the left atrial appendage just gets excluded. So it's not a plug, it's not a, a device that sits in there other than it just wraps and seals the ostium of the device. So this is a, uh, a, the early feasibility for this trial has been completed. The pivotal trial uh, just got approval from the FDA um, and uh, which will be starting pretty soon. This is from a case uh, that was done here at, at Columbia, but if, if you're looking at this on FOSS view of the, of the left atrial appendage, you can see this in the, um, in, in, uh, in the glass view and, and over here, or the true view, here you're starting to see the left atrial appendage kind of on FOSS by itself. And in this slide, as it's being rotated, you can actually begin to see the ostium closing off um, here completely. So no longer do you have to worry about all the sizing, you don't have to worry about leaks, you don't have to worry about device-related thrombus. This system can go and just rotate and then fully exclude uh, the left atrial appendage. And then this is what the device looks like immediate po post-procedure, and then on 40-day follow-up, um, the left atrial appendage has been totally excluded. So I'll close by this saying that the device innovation for LAO has been somewhat stagnant with the exception of this laminar left atrial appendage exclusion device. I think we're going to learn more about it this coming uh, following years as the pivotal trials are completed. There's an increased use of CT for pre and post LAO, which I think is going to be important where we're understanding how 3D ice uh, fits into uh, a lot of programs. I think it's going to help increase throughput for these, these patients. Um, and then we're, we're you know, increasing reproducibility, safety, same day discharge programs. And I think it's gonna be important as we're gonna see a deluge of, of these LAO patients coming into our, our clinics. So again, thank you for the opportunity and appreciate being here. Fantastic, very timely. I think everybody wants a 10 minutes break. Very short. <laughs> Go have a coffee because otherwise they, you know, our sponsors will say, you know, we are not sponsoring next, <laughs> e next year if you don't go to and visit the exhibits. Uh, but yes, I think quick bathroom, coffee, donut, whatever it is, uh, just a short break and just please come back in 10 minutes. We have one TMVR show case and we have presentation by four fellows. <laughs>